Hello, and welcome to Studio 3C. I'm your host, Josina Campbell. We're here this afternoon with SUNY New Paltz photojournalism professor, Lorna, Lorna Taichastu. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. So tell us a little about yourself and your work, specifically in regards to Iraq. Um, I went to Iraq back in before the war in February of 2003. I spent three weeks in the country uh, photographing the faces of the Iraqi people. Mm -hmm. My goal was um, to bring the images home of who we would be fighting. Mm -hmm. And what inspired you to take such a trip? Uh, well, you know, we were looking down um, into the tunnel of war mm -hmm. and uh, it seemed like the country was very pro-war at that time, or at least that's what the media was telling us. And I just, I didn't know what an Iraqi looked like. I didn't know anyone who knew what an Iraqi looked like. Mm -hmm. So I decided I would go and bring home the face of the Iraqi people so we could see who, you know, who, who we would be fighting. And did you have any expectations or assumptions going into your trip? I was a little nervous that, um, I guess, that the bombing would begin while, while I was there. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I knew I was going to come home. If I, if, if, you know, they usually give you 72 hours bef notification on the ground mm -hmm. um, that a war will start. <laughs> right. You know, the UN starts to pull out or whatever. So I thought I would get out of there in time. But that was my... My main concern was I, d I did not want to be there during the bombing. And did you ever doubt your decision to go? No. So you knew from the start you wanted to go? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And can you describe pre-war Iraq for us? Um, you know, it was a, s a country under sanctions. Mm -hmm. uh, they had been under sanctions for uh, eight to ten years at that point, and um, they were starved for basic necessities. So, for instance, um, no new parts of any sort were going had been going into the country. So, if you got into a taxi cab, then maybe there were no winders to pull the windows up and down, mm -hmm. and maybe there were no handles to open up the door. The cr all the windshields were cracked. They just had no new parts. And we also brought in a lot of medication. Um, people had donated different types of you know, aspirin, nothing, vitamins, because none of that was allowed to be shipped into the country. Mm -hmm. So the, the country hadn't been attended to for eight to ten years. Mm -hmm. And what was most surprising to you upon your arrival? Um, what was most surprising? The fact that I was able to get there. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and um, that, it, you know, I went to Baghdad uh, first. And it functioned like a city. There were taxis, and you know, we went to an amusement park. <laughs> there were restaurants. Um, they didn't have everything that was on the menu because the food was scarce. But um, it, everything was functioning pretty normally. And how did the country of Iraq change from when you first arrived to after the war had begun? You know, when I went um, when I went back a year later, the first thing I noticed w was that on every street corner or every two blocks there was an internet cafe. Before the war, there were no internet cafes. There was no internet allowed. Mm -hmm. um, there was no communication with the outside world. And suddenly, there were all these, um, you know, satellite dishes just flying. All these things that you had never seen before, like washing machines. They just lined the streets and mm -hmm. dr hair dryers, uh, elect all sorts of electronics, and they could be bought. Um, refrigerators. So I, I mean, it just and people were connected. Where before the war they had two or three TV stations, suddenly they had cable. Mm. Five hundred, <laughs> you know, um, TV stations were available to them. So it was it was a very heady time. Mm. Really lovely to see. Yeah. And how did Iraqi citizens react to your presence? Did they welcome you or did they find you intrusive? No, they were always very welcoming. Um, incredibly. You know, there were times when, um, before the war, for instance, where I was with a government minder, there were a group of us, we were with the media, we were traveling through Basra, and um, we wanted to take photos. And we kept driving through these towns, and finally he said, okay, somebody complained, and one of the media people, and the minder said, okay, you know, in the next, I'll give you five minutes. Mm -hmm. And literally he threw the doors open of the van, we had five minutes, and ran down the street. And I had two cameras, one with black and white, one with color film, you know, it was film back then. And I just would alternate. I took two and a half rolls of film in two and a half minutes. And, you know, I think back on it now, they, every, I, they were all smiling at me. <laughs> so, you know, that's how welcoming they were. And I think they were shocked. You know, first they'd look at me, I'd take a picture with the one camera, and then they'd kind of smile because it was like, oh, it's over, and what is this crazy woman doing? And then I'd take the next picture, they were smiling. So, um, And I see you brought some pictures here today with us. Do you mind sharing them? 
Yeah, um, this was taken um, before the war. Mm -hmm. And this is in Baghdad, in what is known as the bird market. It's next to the oldest mosque in Baghdad. You can't see it right now. This gentleman, um, there were many um, men in wheelchairs with uh, no, their knees, their, their legs cut off beneath the knees or missing entire legs. And that was due to the Iran-Iraq war where they were in the military and they'd walk over minefields. Mm -hmm. So this gentleman was there. He doesn't look too happy. But I did see him two years later and he was wearing white. He had a brand new wheelchair. You can see like the, um, the tread is off the wheel there. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's one. Mm -hmm. uh, would you like to see yeah. another? These women are um, down in the south in Basra and they were living, Basra was very, um, the population down there was very put upon by Saddam Hussein. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, a lot of them escaped to Iran and others, um, you know, thousands, tens of thousands of people were annihilated by him. So they came out and they were kind of laughing at me. I have other pictures of them where they're actually looking at me and laughing at me. I was going to say, know? they look really happy. <laughs> and they're beautiful. Yeah. Like, incredibly beautiful. Um, and what did you learn from your trip? Too many things. <laughs> You can share anything. Um, well, you know, I went there with a certain mindset, a certain agenda. Uh, I was against the war. I wanted to bring home images to show people um, that they should be angry that a war was happening. Mm -hmm. And over the years, what I've learned, and pretty quickly, uh, Saddam Hussein was um, uh, really torturing and abusing the people. And they, in the beginning, really were very happy, a lot of them, to be liberated. Mm -hmm. And um, I had to make peace with that. And the fact that they all loved a lot of them in Baghdad especially would tell me how much they loved George Bush back in 2004. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to even hear that because I was so upset with my government, I was so upset with the war. But eventually, I think that's when I became a real journalist, when I decided that I wasn't going to pay attention only to my agenda and write stories based on what I thought even before I got in the country, but that I would listen to the people and whatever they were telling me, tell their, their all the different stories that they were telling me. Right. And what was the most difficult part of that experience? Being in Iraq. Having to leave. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry about that. I yeah. um, got a little emotional. Um, Having to leave, I have a blue passport. It's mm -hmm. an American passport. I get mm -hmm. to go wherever I want. Mm -hmm. um, they had to stay in the country. So that's why I just wanted to let you know that. Thanks very that's much for having me. Yes, thank you. And thank you for sharing experience. And thank you for tuning in.